Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we're going to do something a little unusual for this here channel. But I thought why not, because Act 3 of Wano is incoming and I thought it would be a bit of fun to provide some predictions and I have chosen seven arbitrary things to talk about. Bear in mind that I don't take any of these too seriously, it's more just whatever popped into my head as what I see being a strong possibility given the information that we have from Acts 1 and 2. And of course Oda being Oda, he's likely to do something completely different to what every other person in the world would expect anyway. However, before we move on, for those of you who are not manga readers, this video may possibly contain spoilers or allusions to spoilers, so do proceed at your own peril. But for everyone else, let's jump straight into it. And first up, I would like to submit that Act 3 will be the longest act in the entirety of Wano. I've arrived at this conclusion because after two acts, and despite the fact that a war is about to begin, thus potentially signifying some sort of climax, I don't think we are anywhere near ready for some sort of conclusion. Wano still has far too many mysteries at play, and Oda is still very much setting up this chessboard, albeit in a more action-based setting now. I think we have a lot of complications to work through during Act 3, and I would say that it will take the better part of an entire year of publication to get through. So for some context, Act 1 of Wano consisted of 16 chapters, while Act 2 almost doubled that number with 30 chapters. And for Act 3 to be shorter than Act 2 is almost inconceivable given the sheer amount of characters and plot to work through, especially if there's large amounts of action involved, because those scenes take up a lot of page space and generally don't progress the plot too much. And for a direct comparison, let's also remember that the entire climax of Whole Cake Island, once Big Mom started chasing the Straw Hats, took just about 30 chapters as well. And there was significantly less to deal with on Whole Cake Island than we have to look at at Wano. So as it stands, I'm also leaning towards Wano having a total of five acts, placing three smack bang in the middle, dealing with alliances, strategies, complications, and story, whilst act four will be where the big action occurs and potentially hold the defeat of Kaido. Whilst act five will exist as more of an epilogue to wrap up the great adventure on the land of samurai. But we are nowhere near that stage yet. And in fact, I'd like to point out that I'd bet we aren't even halfway through the Wano arc. So act three has a lot of work to do. And I think we should all get very, very comfortable because we may be here a while. Next up for Act 3 of Wano, I predict that we will see a Round 2 of Luffy versus Kaido. And yes, I say Round 2, implying that there will be a Round 3 as well. Now look, despite apparently having become somewhat proficient at advanced armament hockey, that doesn't quite close the gaping chasm of power between Luffy and Kaido, nor do I think any amount of training ever will. However, that certainly isn't going to stop a man as driven and as optimistic as Luffy. So I think that much like his three round bout against Crocodile, Luffy is going to need to take another loss before he realizes the true path to victory, whatever that is. Speaking narratively, it would also be good to show some progress on Luffy's part as the first engagement ended in him being one shot. So if he just leaps into a much more even fight against one of the four emperors, I think it's going to be, you know, just a little bit bullshit. Learning advanced armamentaki is great and all, but I don't think that that is the solution here. And if anything, it's more along the lines of teaming up with the rest of the worst generation to pull off some sort of stunning effort of teamwork. But I don't think that will happen in act three, just Luffy and possibly even Kid trying again stubbornly and getting wrecked in the process. And that feeling of defeat also very much lines up with my next prediction, being that the allied forces on Wano will be absolutely decimated and perhaps even left on the verge of complete defeat. Now, a lot of my thinking here has to do where I believe we are in the structure of the story. So if Wano is a five act piece, as I suspect, then that plonks us straight in the middle of the heart portion of the Johaku model of storytelling, which was applied to traditional Japanese plays. And one common feature about the third act of those plays is that they contain a moment of great drama or tragedy. Narratively, you could say that this is where the story reaches its lowest point. Then goes going on to use Act 4 to rectify and Act 5 to conclude swiftly. And I don't really think that there is any greater potential for drama than having all of the efforts of the allied forces nullified and on the verge of annihilation. Although I should say that this doesn't necessarily need to be the case and a moment of great tragedy could be achieved otherwise, like it was in Act 2 with Yasu's death. However, I think that in order to hit the readers, that tragedy is going to have to strike a little closer to home this time around. Like yes, Yasu's untimely demise was incredibly sad, but we really hadn't had that much time to bond with him as a character. However, that is not the case for all of the main players participating in this battle. So along with Luffy facing off against and losing once again to Kaido, I believe that Act 3 will leave the allied forces at the complete mercy of the beast pirates, requiring rescue by the inevitable force that will show up. Speaking of inevitable forces, Act 3 also seems like about the right time for Denjiro to either show up or to have his fate become known to us. Of all of the Red Scabbards, this is the only one who still remains a mystery, and there's no way that this mystery can go on into the action-based climax. To be honest though, this prediction is probably low-hanging fruit, because narratively, even if I'm wrong about the five-act structure, that just gives him all the more cause to be revealed in Act 3 here. So for example, if Wano ends up being a four-act arc, which is entirely possible and would also adhere to the traditional Japanese narrative structure known as Kisho Tenketsu, then there's no room for Denjiro to be a plot point in the fourth act because that would be the conclusion. And in that case, we are going to find out about our final samurai in this portion of Wano. 
On a similar note, Act 3 is also going to put this traitor business to rest and inform us of exactly how Kaido and Orochi always seem to know vital pieces of information regarding the Allied forces. Now this whole talk of a traitor began way back in the Zoark when Jack was able to find the roaming island on two occasions, causing the Minx to speculate that he may have a Vivia card leading them to the island, meaning that somebody on Zo was leading Jack directly to them. Now if that is indeed the case, then that person is almost certainly a Mink and there is a very popular theory out there that Carrot is the traitor, which while I do find intriguing, I'm not entirely on board with. Due to how Act 2 ended, it would also look like Oda wants us to believe that Law may be a traitor, if not the traitor, but he wasn't Onzo when Jack found it initially. Although I guess Law could have given Jack Beppo's Vivia card, although I think that's an incredible stretch. Even more of a stretch than the carrot idea, actually. Still, there is an undeniable air of ominicity, and Act 3 is going to settle this for us by having whatever traitor there is reveal themselves. And so it may be a huge revelation like Carrot, or one of the Red Scabbards, or it might be something much, much smaller, like a background mink character who is caught passing on information. We should shall see. Another thing that Act 3 is practically begging for is the incoming flashback featuring Kozuki Odin. As it stands now, we still know next to nothing about the tragedy that took place on Wano, and we haven't seen anything but silhouettes of the key figures being Odin and Lady Toki. Now, there's no way we can get into a proper action-based conclusion without seeing this flashback, because this is an established One Piece storytelling device. We need to see the heartfelt flashback so that the eventual moment of victory has more emotional resonance. Think back to Law's flashback on Dress Rosa, Robin's on Any Slobby, Nami's on Arlong Park, and even Nolan's in Skype. In each and every case, the big emotional story needed to play out immediately before the significant action began. And regardless of whether this is a four or five act story, this is the time to do it. And I am very much looking forward to it because every time we get a new piece of information regarding Odin, it makes me more and more excited to see him. Oh, and as a sub prediction, I also think that we should expect this flashback to last quite a while in the grand scheme of things, similar to Laws, I suspect, which was just over six chapters long, because anything less is unlikely to be able to do this grand story that Oda has set up here much justice at all. And finally, my seventh prediction for Act 3 of Wano will be that Jinbei finally makes an appearance. Now, Oda has been very tight-lipped about what has happened to our favorite whale shark since the end of Whole Cake Island, but he has said in an interview that despite being an official member of the Straw Hats, he does not want to draw him in color spreads, as it would spoil an upcoming surprise, most likely meaning that he has had some sort of change in appearance. And while many, including myself, are going to assume the worst there, like a missing arm or some sort of rapid aging by the hands of Big Mom, Act 3 feels like the right time for him to get back into the game. Because here's the thing about Wano, this is going to be the first time that the entirety of the Straw Hats are going to be fighting together since Punk has it. And without having Jinbei there, it just would not feel complete. And this also may be the reason why we still haven't seen a full Straw Hat reunion on Wano, despite everyone having been on the island for a year of publication now. So it would make sense for the first proper reunion to occur with Jinbei there, and to then take him into whatever the final climax is. But that pretty much does it for an arbitrary seven predictions of events to occur in Act 3 of Wano. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own predictions for Act 3 of Wano. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. What your opinion on Oda saying that One Piece will end in five years? All right, so here's something I haven't really addressed on the channel because while it may seem like big news, I don't really take it as such. So this whole thing comes from a comedy group that visited Oda's home studio and one of the members asked when Oda was looking to finish the series. And now while it is true that Oda said that he wanted to finish it in the next five years, you cannot take this as any sort of set in stone response. We need to remember that anything Oda says in terms of timeline is guaranteed to be wrong because hey, originally he wanted to have One Piece last for five years total, but here we are 22 years later, and uh, yeah. What I won't deny is that we are definitely getting into the end game of One Piece. Wano is going to be a massive arc, so there's a lot of time to be taken there. But after that, Luffy will have three of the four road poneglyphs ready to set off to Raftel. So maybe there's another big arc to find the final one, like Elbaf or something to do with the Marines. But we are in the end portion of our journey with the series. I just suspect that finishing it will take a bit longer than five years, hopefully anyway. So let's not all go crazy with putting a five year timer on One Piece, because it just may surprise you. I'm hungry. What should I eat? Oh, good question. Well, if it was I who were hungry, what I would do is weigh up my cooking skills, as well as how much time I could be bothered to dedicate to making a meal against the amount of money it would take to have something delivered right to my door. 
like honey chicken, for example. So you know what? It's settled. You're having honey chicken. No, I don't care if you're gluten intolerant. You really should have thought of that before asking someone else to pick your sustenance for you. Enjoy.